There is a lot of discussion in the drone hobby about line of sight and what it actually means. Today, we're going to clarify what the UK rules say and talk a little about situational awareness. Hey everyone, my name is Sean and welcome to Geeks of Honor. Here we post content related to drones and tech, including drone rule focused videos like this one. For more, you know what to do, subscribe. Line of sight is an interesting topic. And in this video, I'm going to give you my interpretation of the rules, taking into account things like Article 241 for drone flights in the UK. This, like my other drone rule videos, are intended to give you the facts as I'm aware of them and leave you to take from the video what you wish. I'm not trying to tell you what to do or how to act. There's a link in our description to our full UK drone rules playlist. Okay, so visual line of sight, what does it mean in terms of the rules? Firstly, let's take a look at the CAA UK drone code and what it tells us. It is point two of the code and it reads, always keep your drone or model aircraft in direct sight and make sure you have a full view of the surrounding airspace. You must be sure you can spot any nearby hazards in the air or on the ground and avoid collisions. You must be able to see your drone or model aircraft without using binoculars, telephoto lens, or electronic equipment such as smartphone, tablets, or video goggles. Normal glasses and contact lenses are fine. Now we need to look at the UK CAA's main policy guidance document, CAP 722, for more detail. Section 2.1.1 reads, operating within visual line of sight or VLOS, means that the remote pilot must be able to clearly see the unmanned aircraft and the surrounding airspace at all times while it is airborne. The key requirement of any flight is to avoid collisions and a VLOS operation means that the remote pilot is able to monitor the aircraft's flight path and so maneuver it clear of anything it might collide with. While corrective lenses may be used, the use of binoculars, telescopes or any other form of imaging enhancing devices are not permitted. Putting things in very simple terms, when operating VLOS, the aircraft must not be flown out of sight of the remote pilot's eyes. The CAA will normally accept that VLOS requirement is met when the UA or unmanned aircraft is flown out to a distance of 500 meters horizontally from the remote pilot, but only if the aircraft can still be seen at this distance. The operating height is limited to a maximum distance of 400 feet, 120 meters, as we all know, from the closest point of the Earth's surface. Operations at a greater distance from the remote pilot may be permitted if an acceptable safety case is submitted. For example, if the aircraft is large, it may be justifiable that its flight path can be monitored visually at a greater distance than 500 meters. That, of course, will require operational authorization. Conversely, for some small aircraft, operations out to a distance of 500 meters may mean it is not possible to assure or maintain adequate visual contact. And so the aircraft must obviously be kept closer to the remote pilot. So bringing all this information into the real world, what does it mean for how far you should fly your drones? Well, it depends on a number of factors, such as how good your eyesight is and the size of your drone. For instance, a DJI Mini 2 would certainly be harder to see further out than a DJI Inspire. Remember as well that it is not just a visual line of sight of the drone itself you need, but in the words of the UK CAA, the remote pilot should be able to monitor the aircraft's flight path and so maneuver it clear of obstructions. So my personal advice here is to ensure you keep the drone within a distance where you can still clearly see which direction it is heading in and whether or not anything else from the air or ground is going to conflict with the drone. Take into account that other drones and aircraft, etc., could suddenly come into the airspace. So you need to be close enough to assess the safest action and be able to take it. If you fly too far out and your drone is just a speck on the horizon, you might be unable to assess whether it is safe to land at that location, remembering that you cannot rely on the video feed in terms of the UK drone rules. Also keep in mind that the height that you're flying at will impact the distance you'll be able to maintain line of sight for as well. If your drone is 400 feet in the air, it is already harder to see. So consider this when you're planning your next flights. Another important consideration is night flight VLOS. 
As per the CAA CAP 722, there are no specific extra rules for the hobby flights at night in the UK, but you still need to be able to see the aircraft and surrounding airspace. So consider that carefully. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on line of sight and how you personally adapt your flights to help assess safety, etc. I'd really be interested to know your thoughts. If you're still watching this video now, hit that like button. Sean out.